Hey, hey, you guys. Hope you're doing well. God bless you. All right. I am doing a follow-up video to two of the Beyonce videos that I have done in the past. One was entitled, Beyonce is done. And the other was entitled, I think I said, stop praying for Beyonce is what I said. So those two videos. And I got a lot of comments, some people agreeing, but a lot of people are like, oh my goodness, how can we stop praying for her? You know, she's still alive. She's still here. You know, you're a Christian. You ought to be praying for her. You know, what kind of mess is this? Well, let me tell you this. Stop praying for her. And I'm going to say it again. Stop praying for her. You are wasting your prayers. You're wasting your time and the ears of the good Lord. All right. Let me tell you a story. Uh, maybe you're not familiar with it. It's in the Bible. First uh, Samuel chapter two. If you are aware of this story, great. If not, listen up and then even take time for yourself. Read it. First Samuel chapter two. And it talks about Eli's sons. Their names were Hophni and Phinehas. They were two of the most wicked priests that there ever were uh, inside the Bible. If you read about them. And they did all sorts of atrocities. Here they are, you know, dedicated to be priests and they've been doing their job. But again, they are taking advantage of the people. They are cheating from, you know, the sacrifices and taking more than they're supposed to. They are there, you know, sexually advancing on the woman. And, you know, even though they're married, but, you know, messing around with the ladies that come to the temple as well and forcing themselves on them and all sorts of other things that they were doing so much that it was such an eyesore to God. He was so disgusted with them that he said, you know what? I am done. And he said, no more. He says, that's it for them. Judgment has been passed on them and that they will die. There is no reconciling for them. There is no praying for them. There's no sacrifice that you can offer that's going to make me reconcile. That's it. That's what God said. Read First Samuel chapter 2 and you'll read about them. God said, no more. Now here, they didn't drop dead right away. They kept living. They kept living for a while. I'm not sure exactly how long they kept living for, but a time came when a war came up and they went into war. They took the Ark of the Covenant, I believe, into war and it ended up getting taken away and they ended up getting killed. And that was the end of them. And they're, you know, you go ahead and read the story. I'm not going to continue to narrate the rest of what happened. Very sad story, but it is what it is. But judgment had passed for them. They were walking dead. Many of us here in this world are walking dead and you don't know it. That's why it's so important to make sure that you have a relationship with God and to make sure that you keep in good standing to say that you are being obedient to his word. Yes, we are saved by the grace of God, but that does not mean that you can go out and do whatever it is that you want to do. You're not going to go out and lie, cheat and steal and, you know, break all the commandments. Oh, well, we're covered by, you know, the new commandments and new law in the Bible. Dude, you'd be surprised those ones still stand. I believe they still stand. I, I am a firm believer still in Old Testament. And so, and a lot of the rules and laws of our, of our world, you know, and of our government, you know, still rest on the, on the good old Ten Commandments. And so, hey, you break it, you're disobedient, then there's consequences. The same thing that goes for a lot of us. We are being disobedient to the word of God. We are not following and doing what God has called us to do. And so hence, God says, I'm done. He's knocking on your door. He's saying, hey, I'm here. He's trying to get you to, you know, to have a change of heart and to live a right life and do what's right. The Holy Spirit is there knocking on the doors of your heart day in and day out, but you're not listening. You are doing what you want to do without regard. And so then there's another Bible text that just came to me now. The Holy Spirit said that where people, I think it was with the children of Israel, they would go about, he was like, you know what? That's okay. You know, he left them to their own depravities. He would turn them over. If that's what they want, let them live that life. And he, that was it, you know? And so some of us, that's what he's doing. And then after a while, I think they came back and they were like, oh Lord, we're sorry. You know, they repented of their sins, but you know, you still have to pay the consequences. And a lot of times they would get sold into slavery. They would get sold into slavery. A lot of them died out. And that was it for them. I think about King Saul in the Bible. You know, he was anointed by God, the first king of Israel. And he didn't do such a good job. He was more about the people. He was more concerned about the people, pleasing the people than pleasing God. And so much then the Lord withdrew himself. He withdrew his spirit from him. And so he didn't have that relationship with it anymore because, again, of the way that he was acting and behaving. He was disobeying what God told him to do blatantly all because he wanted to please the people. He wanted to make sure that he was in good standing with the people. And it made uh, the prophet Samuel the same, well, go and read the story, the same Samuel that was here in this story with um, Hophni and Phinehas. He was a little boy then, and now he's a big grown man, an old man, and he's here now underneath, you know, King Saul and he had you know crowned him anointed him and he was been crowned king and he's lamenting over him as if he's his own son because here now you know the Lord says I'm done with him and he himself also ended up dying tragically in war you know very very sad story 
but it is what it is. Many people are walking dead and you don't know it because you are out of alignment with God and you are not living a right life. Beyonce is out of alignment with God. She has gone, she goes against the Bible and God's word. Her lifestyle does not reflect Christ. She may say that, oh, I'm a Christian. Oh, I believe in God. What God is she serving? It is certainly not the God of heaven, not the creator of the universe, not the great I am, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. She's not serving that God. Maybe the God down there, down in you know, those hot places, I think that's who she's serving. But alas, who am I to say? I pray the Lord God will open your eyes to see and that God will open your ears to hear and that you will read the word of God for yourself and have an understanding for yourself before you make comments, learn and understand and know, and then you'll have a better understanding. All right. So we all can be on the same page. This is why I say stop praying for her. And it wasn't even me. It's the Holy Spirit that told me to stop praying for her because I was like, Lord, you know, maybe, you know, there's still a chance. And God said, stop praying for her. She's, go, you know, I go watch the other two videos. I'm not going to go over and reiterate everything, but she is not living a right life. She and those around her, and she is fully immersed into whatever it is that she's in, whatever levels of witchcraft she's in. She is a full-blown witch. Even in the news, a few weeks back, I heard some other celeb celebrity person talking about it. Who was it on? She was on Tasha Kay's show. I think I saw it in passing. I don't watch the show, but I saw a clip of it while I was passing, you know, anyhow. She's involved in this stuff. Everybody knows this. You can see it in the imagery, in her, in her dancing, in, in the, um, just the way she carries herself. She is not a child of God. Her behavior, her is not of God. All right? So learn for yourself. Read these Bible verses for yourself. Read about Hophni and Phinehas. Read about Saul. Anybody else that you can think of. But they were not living lives that were reflective of Christ. And so the Lord is like, hey, that's it. So stop praying for them. Stop praying for them. Even Saul was like, you know, Saul about Samuel was like, Lord, let me pray and intercede for him. Maybe, please, you know, give him a second chance. And the Lord was like, nope, I'm done. And when God says he's done, he's done. God is very gracious. He is very merciful. He is very kind. And um, he is slow to, you know, in regards to passing judgment on others. Many of us ought to have been dead a long time ago with some of the things that we've done. Look at people like John Ramirez and others, you know, they gave their heart and mind and life to Christ. They gave into the urgings of the Holy Spirit. But you see Beyonce, she has not. She is still out here in these streets doing what she wants to do as she wants to do it. And she's taking many down with her. Stop praying for her. All right. I pray that you have a, a good night or a good day or a good afternoon whenever you watch this. And remember that God loves you and that he cares for you. And I am praying for you and I want the best for you. Pray for, let's pray for each other. Let's pray for each other and do as the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding you. All right. And again, as I always say, don't trust in my words. Hey, who am I? Trust in the Lord God. Talk to the Lord God. Present this to him. Don't get all in your feelings and say, hey, oh, you know, talk to the Lord God. Put yourself aside. I put myself aside all the time and it's about the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? Talk to the Holy Spirit. I love you guys and I'll talk to you in next video. All right. Take care. Ciao.